happy friday happy valentine's day my name is emma this is drinking by my shelf and i'm here to ruin love for you by telling you why you should stop shipping joe and laurie or at least in this video i'm just going to tell you everything that i find interesting about the story behind little women are they like scary little so forgive me if this video ends up super rambly i have not planned any kind of structure for it i also am not an expert on little women or louisa may alcott I'm just kind of obsessed with this story, so I've done a lot of reading about it through Google. But please do correct me if you think I've got anything wrong. We all know the internet is not always the best source of information, so I may not have all the facts right. But I think this is a really, really interesting story. I started being obsessed with Little Women about four years ago when I first re-picked it up. I'd read it as a child, um, but I reread it for the first time and didn't actually enjoy it that much. I found it to be quite preachy and quite moralistic, but at that time I was writing something about it for Bustle and when I went to Google some of the story, it totally changed my perspective of the book. So that's what I want to tell you about now. And also I have recently just reread it again and I want to amend my opinion of it. I actually love it, <laughs> partly because I now have the context, partly because I just saw the brilliant, brilliant, Greta Gerwig adaptation which you know has just made me fall in love with it all over again so then reading it was really fun and partly because I actually think the book works better if you do divide it into the original volumes so you probably know Little Women the book that we now know as Little Women was originally two volumes there are more books later on in the series but those are the two that usually get grouped together I thought that now they were just always sold together as Little Women rather than Little Women and Good Wives but apparently that is more common in the US, whereas over here they often still are sold separately, because this is now the second version of this book I've bought that turns out to just be volume one. Volume one, the original Little Women, or originally Meg, Joe, Beth and Amy, is fucking fantastic. That book is great, love it start to finish. It's the second volume where I have my problems, and that is partly in the story that I'm eventually going to tell you, and partly just the book itself is not as fun. The things that I love about this book are like the sisterhood, them all being there together, and in the second book they are all separated. The language is totally different. The way it's written is way more formal, way more stuffy. Like this reads like, I mean, it's children's classic. Um, it's really, really readable. It's really funny. And the second book is just a lot more uptight. So Louisa May Alcott, for the purposes of this video, I am going to use they pronouns for them. I'm not saying this is right. I've thought a lot about it and I think the answer is we just don't know which pronouns Louis, as they like to be called, would have wanted to use if they were alive today. So using they is just what I've chosen to do as the most respectful thing. I, I don't know if that's right or wrong, please do let me know. So Louis Alcott, as they always are to be referred to by their friends and family, is the author of Little Women. Looking back with hindsight, it's impossible for us to know now what their gender identity would have been by our modern standards. We just can't ever know that. So I'm not going to try and claim it, but, and people get very, very upset about people trying to claim that you can know something in the past, but I do think it is worth considering. The modern interpretation that's generally accepted is just that Louis was a cisgender woman, but a tomboy. The second interpretation is that they were what we would by today's standards call a trans man. And obviously that's not something that we can retrospectively put onto them but I think it's just as people get very upset saying you know you can't possibly know so it's silly to put that on them okay well we can't possibly know that they were cisgender either so I think you have to be open-minded so the reason some people think this about Louis is that they wrote at one point in their diary they wrote lots in their diary about wishing they were a boy just like Joe March does um but at one point they wrote the sentence I can't help but feel that by some freak accident I'm a man born into a woman's body so from that sentence it is possible that by today's standards they would have been a trans man. Of course there are then other ways to interpret that, partly the fact that gender roles back then were even more fixed and rigid and oppressive than they are now. So it's possible that they would be a cisgender woman today, um, but are just a woman who expressed themselves differently, but the fact that when they were born being a woman meant that they weren't allowed education, they weren't allowed to use certain slang, dress a certain way, you know, behave a certain way at all, might be the reason for why they felt they were a man put into a woman's body. I think either interpretation that has to be considered. Another way you can look at that sentence is looking at the fact that they then go on in that journal to say immediately afterwards that they believe that they're a man born into a woman's body because they have fallen in love with many beautiful women but never a single man. So 
Another interpretation is it's possible that Louis Alcott was a lesbian and that again, by the understanding they had of sexuality at that time, that didn't make any sense to them and so they viewed themselves as uh, them, them being a man on the inside was the only way to make sense of their attraction to women. So I'm not going to try and pick a theory, we just don't know, um, but that's the reason I'm using they pronouns is just to pay respect to the fact that Louis obviously um, questioned gender, um, wanted to be known as Louis, felt themselves to be a man on the inside for whatever reason that was, um, and so that's why I'm going to use they pronouns. So Louis Alcott wrote Little Women, and Little Women is very, very autobiographical. Lou was in a family of four sisters just like this one. Joe March is basically entirely inspired by Louis. And for Joe, I am going to use she pronouns because she is referred to as a she in the book. So Joe was based on Louis, and all of the sisters have an exact direct counterpart in Louis's own life, including a uh, the um, you know, middle younger sister, Beth, who was really called Lizzie or Eliza, um, who did die very young and who was very close to Louis, so you know, that heartache and grief is, is directly taken from their real life. And also the younger sister was called May, literally an anagram of Amy, um, and they were quite similar in their obstinance but butted heads a lot. Like, it really is, the characters are directly taken from Louis' own life, which is why I, while I don't think you should always take a book and the author as, like, the same and try and make arguments, I think in this case, Joe and Louis are so closely entwined that that's why a lot of my like feelings about how we should see Joe are inspired by that. Louis Alcott did not really want to write this book. They were much more interested in writing adventure stories and that's what they had been doing. But the publisher um, suggested that they should write a book for young girls. So Louis did write this book and this one that I'm holding here, which is just volume one, the initial book, is fantastic. It's such a fun book. The real problem comes after this book came out. It was very, very popular, at which point the publisher wanted another. Now, Louis could have just said no if they weren't interested, but this is where I'm going to look at Louis's parents, who again are very, very recognisable as the March parents in the book. Louis's father, Amos Alcott, was an interesting man. So he was like a vegan activist before his time. He did advocate for rights for women, um, even though his wife, Abigail, um, sometimes butted heads with him because she still didn't think that he understood enough about uh, women's struggles um, and so she was even more of a feminist than he was. But Amos I think was always losing their money in different schemes he was trying. He founded this like utopian commune called Fruitlands which was not a success and lost all of their money. And there's a line in the book where Joe I think talks about how their father had lost all of his money helping a friend. So I think from that the parallels there suggest to me at least that Louis saw their father as ultimately kind, if not always very sensible. But we, there were tensions in the family. Louis and their mother, Abigail, did butt heads with their father about feminism and other various things that they all believed very strongly. They were a family that had strong values. You know, they sound like this fascinating family. So Amos, always struggling for money, one of the things he wanted to do was write. And the publisher essentially bribed Louis by saying that they would publish their father's work if Louis would write the second book for this. So I guess Louis felt really compelled to write the second volume of Little Women, where the publisher had said that the characters had to be married off, and readers were clamouring for Joe to marry Laurie. Everybody was shipping Joe and Laurie, and Louis wrote in their diary, I won't marry Joe to Laurie to please anyone. So stop shipping Joe and Laurie because Louis really didn't want you to. And as I'm about to go and do, Joe also really didn't want you to, so stop doing it. Nobody really likes the match of Joe and Professor Bayer. It is a slightly strange match. I didn't mind it that much this time round because I do like that they have this kind of equal partnership, that they go into business together. Um, but it is a funny match and it's not... It's not as exciting as the Joe and Laurie story, but that was also on purpose, which I kind of love. So Louis was so cross with the fact that everyone wanted them to marry Joe to Laurie and was so refusing to do it, but at the same time their publisher was saying that they would only publish them if Joe was married and, you know, then would only publish their father, so they felt really compelled to do what they were told. So deliberately, again, wrote in their diary that they had, or wrote in a letter, I think, that they had deliberately um, found an odd match for Joe. And basically they, they found this like a really funny joke. They were like, fine, you want Joe to get married? I'm gonna just like fucking marry her to some weirdo. And that's what they did, just out of spite. So the reason that you hate that match at the end 
is on purpose. That's Louis's punishment to you for shipping Joe and Laurie, you know? We're now gonna go back and talk about Joe March herself. So, Joe, fucking ace character. She's basically Louis Alcott, especially when we know her in book one. She is this really fun, fiercely independent, like 15 year old girl who wishes that she was a boy because she wants to go and fight in the war. She loves hanging out with boys because she loves using their slang. She just feels like very relaxed with them. She doesn't want to get married. She wants to have ambitions. She wants to have all the opportunities in life that are afforded to men. So that's Jo. She meets Laurie, her next door neighbor. And she loves Laurie because they can be real friends. She feels relaxed with him for like the first time because he's not like her sisters telling her that she has to stand a certain way and do her hair a certain way. She feels like they're these like kindred spirits. And I really loved the way in the film this was shown by, they like wear the same wardrobe, they wear the same clothes, they just swap items of clothing. They're just seen as little twins rather than anything else. Their relationship in the book jumps off the page and comes to life even more than it did in the film somehow. Like they're so playful together. It's just an absolute joy to read. And I think it is actually really, really rare even now to read such good portrayals of genuine friendship between a boy and a girl that shipping these two is a shame. Just enjoy them as such real friends. At any point, if he compliments her or his family suggests that he's complimenting her, Jo thinks that it spoils her fun. It's so far from what she wants. She doesn't want Laurie to view her that way because it, it doesn't, it's not even crossing her mind at that point. As the book goes on, and particularly into volume two, her family keep making comments and Jo hates it so much. It's like she's talking, I think because it does happen in volume two. So it's like, again, that's Louis talking to the reader being like, Joe hates it when you do this. And now if we're going back to the parallels with real life, Louis did have a friend, a male friend called Laddie, a Polish boy who was much younger than them, like 13 years younger than them or, or even more, who is um, apparently very much the inspiration for Laurie. And some people think that there may have been a romance between these two. They went off traveling Europe together for a few months, um, which was very rare for a man and a woman um, to be traveling together alone, unchaperoned. But Louis said that it was all perfectly fine and proper because of their age. And also probably because in their head, there was no romance there. They were just genuine friends. Of course, again, I can't claim to know that. It's possible that there was a romance there. My own, just like totally speculating about this um, theory is just that the reason Louis liked hanging out so much with with boys and particularly younger boys, Laddie was a lot younger, um, was that they were kind of the representation to them of the life that they had never been allowed to live. So spending time exploring the world with this, you know, young, like 20 something boy on the brink of all the possibilities that Louis wished they had had available to them. I think that's probably what drew them to people like Laddie and that's kind of what she represents in Laurie. But like I said, who knows? Maybe they were madly in love. I have no idea and I can't pretend to know. So that's basically the story of Louis Alcott that I find really interesting. Seeing them as this feminist who wanted to break free of the rules of gender of their time, whether that was um, you know, through identifying as trans or just through changing the possibilities for women, Either way, that they were ahead of their time in that way. Um, and I find it then really, really sad, the fact that in this first volume, there's a point where all of the sisters talk about their castles in the sky, their ambitions. Um, and Meg's is kind of, you know, a house with a husband. Um, but Joe's is very much, a husband is not part of the picture. She wants ambition, she wants success, she wants fame. She wants to make something of herself with her writing, which is exactly what Louis Alcott did. But the fact that even through Louis's writing, they weren't allowed to express themselves properly because the book that they were told to write purely because of the fact of them being a female writer this was the book they had to write meant that joe couldn't get her castle in the sky and the thing that makes me so frustrated about reading volume two of this um and i would love to know i would love to have been a fly on the wall in the conversations with the publisher in the writing process the editing process to know how much of this was louis's thoughts and how much was just them writing to please their publisher but they kind of make joe repent almost joe ends up by the end of the final book feeling that she was wrong um and that actually you know, she, she's still quite boyish and she's still independent and she sets up her own school but she feels really glad that her castle in the sky now involves a husband um, and she does change her character quite a lot through falling in love and she also throughout the second book tries really hard to to, to 
stay more feminine um, and to keep all of her kind of more boyish impulses inside um, and she views it as like a moral failing, it's like giving into those. That's all really sad to read about and I'd love to know is that something that Louis felt um, that they that they should be able to to keep their you know, boyish tendencies um, in check or is it something that Louis just wrote to be like fine I'll write this to the publisher and I'll make money in which case fair enough though it's still sad for us to read about that happening to joe but that's also why i love the most recent movie so so much i've said to quite a few people that and i think i've said it in a video before as well that this version of little women is the story that louis would have wanted to write if they were alive today if they were allowed this is how they would have told that story so happy valentine's day if you want some romance to think about go and ship amy and laurie because she got exactly what she wanted you know she ended up with a rich husband who she actually loved so like fucking props to amy march i would have never have sprained my ankle i have lovely small feet the best in the family and if you have any more cool facts about louis alcott please put them in the comments because i'm like fully obsessed at this point so that's it from me give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button below for new videos every week cheers